I was asking him why she would just out of the blue do this. He told me she said she was tired of being a wife and felt like she was missing out on fun. What's going on everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another subscriber email story. Guys, if you want to share a story, send it to truestorynation at gmail.com. Here, I'll put it on the screen. That's truestorynation at gmail.com. Whether it's a funny story, a successful story, a story where you've made it out of a situation where someone did you wrong and you made it out successfully, man, you leveled up. That's how you got your revenge or you had the opportunity to get a bit of revenge on that person or you got to see them go through karma. Send those stories in. But you guys read the title. Let's get into it. So divorce out of nowhere. Oh, man. Mm, mm, mm. Hey, true. My friends call me stick. Love your content. I've been listening for a good couple of years now. You and, you and so many other channels like yours helped me a lot and had me open my eyes about the true nature of women. It's been one hell of a ride and incredibly enlightening hearing what so many men have to say about their situation and what they are going through. Anyway, my story isn't actually my story, but what happened to my friend. What's sort of ironic about this is that we could actually carpool on our way to work and listen to these very stories, videos and talk about the situations that other men have gone through. So my friend is a 40 something year old guy and I have known him for a couple of years now. Really good guy, a little hot headed, kind of like a Raphael to my Donatello. He and his wife have been married for I think at least 20 years with a son and daughter, both well on their way to have families on their own. His life is far from perfect, but he's a tough son of a gun who doesn't take crap from anybody and always, always looks after his family. Honestly, it's hard to find a man of his character anywhere else. He told me that when he met his wife, it was love at first sight, which of course I told him it's impossible in a made up fairy tale. But the way he talked to his wife on the phone, on the way to work made me question that a little bit. You should have heard them talking. Like they were two kids in high school to the point I almost told him to knock it off because it was almost nauseating to hear him caking on the phone. But whatever, I let it slide. Fast forward a couple of months, I had to go into surgery and take off for a little while. And he got another ride to work. When I came back, I noticed a particularly dismal look on his face one day. I was asking him what's up and is everything good. He said his wife wants a divorce, seemingly out of nowhere. Now, in this life of mine, not a whole lot surprises me much anymore, but that info he laid on me threw me for a loop. He said he was just as surprised as I was. This is the guy who randomly told me one day, I didn't think it was possible for me to fall in love with my wife all over again. I was asking him why she would just out of the blue do this. He told me, she said she was tired of being a wife and felt like she was missing out on fun. Told you guys, they do not like feeling like they're missing out. It's not worth it. I really don't know how much so-called fun a 40-something single mother can have after she spent 20 of those wasted years being a mother and a wife. But hey, she'll find something. I guess her something will find her. What sucks about this is that that's not the first time I heard that lame excuse for a divorce. You're probably thinking she was talking to another guy. To be honest, it's possible, but I'm not too sure because his wife is quiet, overweight, and not exactly in a good way. Yeah, but you gotta understand, man. You gotta understand. It doesn't matter what these women look like. There's always gonna be some guys trying to get with them. You take that same man with that description you just gave of his wife. Take that same man and in, in, in you have her. She will have way more men on her in that shape than a man in that shape will get women to be on him. And that's just the, that's just the truth. But hey, fat chicks can get it done too, I suppose. 
From what I could tell, he had many sleepless and tearful nights from this news and was forced to move out of his home. She kicked him out. To make matters worse, it seems that his wife manipulated his son, a bit convincing him it was somehow my buddy's fault and as a consequence has stopped talking to him when he needed his son's support the most. What gets me is how fast all of this occurred. Literally one day everything is happy and normal and the next day your wife wants a divorce and your world is turned upside down. If there's a lesson here I suppose is this. Time together and loyalty is practically irrelevant next to a woman's whims and so-called emotional needs. Doesn't matter how much you love them. It doesn't matter you're a good man. All that matters is what you've given to a woman lately. Absolutely. How many times have I said that? My friend is more or less stable now, lives in his own apartment, is standing on his own two feet. I don't know if he's talking to his son or not, but regardless, I'll be there for him. Thanks for thanks for listening. I hope you keep up the good work, my man. Wow. Let me give my thoughts. Man, I, I, I'm telling you guys, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. It's not what it's not what you've done for me in the past. It's what have you done for me not right now, lately. I see something better out there that I want. You can't I I don't you can't provide it for me. So I want a divorce. Yeah, all that lovey dovey stuff we were doing yesterday. That's how I felt yesterday. This is how they think, guys. She felt that way that day. Until she was talking to a friend who's been cheating on her husband. And says she wants a divorce because some biker guy at the bar gave it to her last night. He, he put it on her last night. Not like her husband does it. Her husband's boring now. And now, now guess what? His wife feels like she's missing out. She's missing out on fun. So she said, screw this. I want a divorce. Or she's been cheating. She's been on Tinder meeting guys. And she felt like she found something better. They are always always going to look for a better deal always it's nothing wrong with constantly wanting to improve yourself in that you know career wise money wise getting in shape health all that stuff but when it comes to being with somebody you promise you swore to stand by their side forever all of a sudden you're searching for a better deal oh i found it I'm going to get out of here. Yeah, I know I promised that, but I don't feel that way anymore. Why would you waste your time getting married? I'm sorry, God. I can't do it. Married? No. Absolutely not. I got a feeling we're going to get an update from you, man, sometime down the road, whenever. And his wife came back crying. I made a mistake because she's never, she's never going to find love like that again. She's not going to find somebody like that. This man said he fell in love with her again. He talked to her on the way to work. Wow. Crushed his world, man. And she does not care. She does not give a crap. Wow, guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. Thanks for sending in this email. Feel free to send in an email whenever you want. Guys, if you're new here, if this is the first video video you've heard on True Story, I'm going to go ahead and attach a flashback story. With that being said, I'll catch you guys at the next one. Me, a 28-year-old male, walked in on my wife, who's 25, cheating with my best friend. He's 28. Hello, True. I am a new sub to your channel, as I've only recently started looking for content of this type to cope and deal with my circumstances. The blow I've suffered is fresh. I discovered her infidelity when I caught her with a man I considered a brother just one week ago. Never in a billion years would I imagine I'd be in the fraternity of men, but here I am broken, angry, mourning the loss of my marriage. My wife Tara and I married in 2018. We'd been together since 2015. She wasn't my girlfriend during the first year we were together as I played the field. I had a rotation of four girls I was dating casually, Tara being one of them. 
As time progressed, she eventually proved to be the one with staying power. We began to date exclusively, and eventually I proposed to her. I'm going to skip over all the details of our marriage. That doesn't matter anymore. The virus had put a strain in our lives, as we both were forced to work from home. Within just a couple of months, it became clear that being under each other 24-7, we both were exposed to aspects about ourselves that we hadn't taken into account prior. Things just continued to feel off. And if she wasn't home working, she'd be out to the gym or with her girlfriends. She completely stopped making time to hang with me, and our sex life dwindled to her giving me a lazy hand job once in the blue because she was too tired from working out so much. Her time away to the gym increased from three days a week for two hours to five days a week for three to four hours. I was happy she was spending this time in the gym and she was admittedly getting more fit. She leaned out and slimmed down like crazy. I mean, the change was radical in how she dedicated herself to getting in shape. That's not to say I'm not, but in the realm of physical fitness, I'd always been ahead of her, but she was easily matching or bettering my output. Under normal circumstances, this would be great, but if there were normal circumstances, I wouldn't be typing this. I became suspicious of her cheating on me four months ago. All of the telltale signs were there as she became increasingly distant. The red flags grew bigger and brighter. Pretty soon it was obvious someone else had interjected themselves into my marriage, but I had no proof, and her devices were on her at all times. So even if I wanted to install one of those monitoring apps, there would be no way to get it on her phone. So after months of being in the dark and living in paranoia, I couldn't act on it. Last week, I decided to tell her on the way to the gym. I'm not at all proud of it, but it was the only way I could think of getting some peace of mind. She goes to the gym, and she is inside roughly about two hours. Yes, I sat and waited, but she's not alone. She comes out of the gym with, of all people, my best friend, Shet. I've known Shet for 11 years. He's my road dog. He was my best man. We had our first beers together. He's a guy I trusted with impunity. At this point, I am awash with confusion. I knew they went to the same gym, but I'd never had any reason to suspect if she was stepping out of our marriage. It was with him. That got dashed by what happened next. Rather than go to her car and head home, she walks with Shet to his car, chatting away with him. When they reach his car, he proceeds to grab a handful of my Taurus behind, pull her close, and tongue her down. By this point, I'm seeing red. My blood is boiling and I'm fuming. I punch a nice dent into the roof of my car as I just sit there and watch as they are at it for at least two minutes. Right before getting into his car and leaving the lot. For a split second, I thought to just go home. But there was no way I was going to be able to sit and wait knowing what they were doing. I tell my best friend's car 20 minutes until they pull into the driveway of his house. I park about three houses down so not to draw attention and watch as they shuffle out of his car literally all over each other into his front door. For the next 20 minutes or so, I contemplated what I was going to do. And that's when my boiling anger turned to an unsettling calm. I start my car and pull up to his driveway. After a deep breath, I get out of my car and go up to the front door. Wouldn't you know it, it's not locked. Yeah, I'm well aware that what I was doing was bordering on illegal, but I didn't care. I open the door to hear loud music and the unmistakable sound of my dear Tyra moaning. I follow the sound to the back where his bedroom clearly was. I stand at the door and make peace with what's happening on the other side as well as make peace with what I was about to do. I make a quick check on the door, and it's not locked. I open the door to the sight of Shet with Tara's legs pinned behind her head, going to pound town. Without even a second thought, I lunge forward into the room and in two steps deliver a swift teep kick right into his right rib cage. For those who don't know what a teep is, it's basically a front kick, a jab with your foot rather than your fist. It makes a satisfying crack as he goes flying out of her and off of the bed. The moment she sees what's happening and notices me, she shrieks in terror. Shet gets off the floor, clutching at his side where I'd kicked him. 
only to get a glance at me a couple seconds before I come over the top with an overhand hook. Hit him right on the button. He crumbled like a steak cookie. Tyra at this point jumps in between me and Shet's begging me not to hurt him and just leave. He staggers back up to his feet trying to say, of all things, I'm sorry. I lost it then and there. I shove her out the way, tackle him to the floor, and proceed to beat the crap out of my former best friend. He didn't even try to fight back. He just attempted to cover up as I rained bombs on him. Tyra makes two failed attempts to pull me off of him, but I wanted my 10 pounds of flesh. After laying a beating on him, I stood up and kicked him flush in the same rib I'd kicked him off the bed in. He let out a horrible scream. I am almost certain that one broke a rib. He's laying on the floor naked and grimacing in pain, and Tyra's tending to him and trying to calm him down. The sight of her trying to protect him, the guy, not her husband, sent me into a dark place. As she stood up and looked at me, after trying to console him, I spit right in her face telling her she disgusts me, and she'd better get used to being here, because she has no home with me anymore. As I turn to leave, she's crying uncontrollably and begging me not to leave. That she can explain everything. She tries to grab my arm, and I snatch it away, followed by shoving her to the floor. She's half naked, following me out of his house, begging and pleading me not to go, and that we can all talk about this. It's like I stepped into the twilight zone or something. As I get in my car and peel out, the weight of it all hits me. I don't get a half mile away before I have to pull over. I'm sobbing uncontrollably over the loss of not just my marriage, but my friendship. I knew things were shaky with me and Tara, but for her to do this to me with my friend of all people, that's a level of hurt I don't wish anyone to experience. Then it sunk in that I just beat a man's butt in, in his own house. Now I'm panicking whether or not they'd call the cops on me. I hit the gas and floored it home. Didn't sleep a wink the whole night. I just sat in my living room waiting for sirens to near, but they never did. Around 6.30 a.m. that morning, Tara returns. The moment she sees me, she just falls to her knees, bawling. Between her apologizing, she explains everything. She tells me that he wasn't to blame. She came on to him. She was apparently pissed off at me for apparently not making the effort to be there for her. How over the lockdown we grew apart, and she had no one to confide in because I was emotionally withdrawn. So she started doing so with Shet, and it grew into an emotional affair. She said she's the one who pushed it towards a physical affair, because her emotional dissatisfaction with me grew into a sexual dissatisfaction with me. She said she was mortified by how I just snapped, and told me that, as I suspected, I'd broken two of his ribs. He was in a hospital and wasn't going to press charges. I let her talk not saying a word, and when I sensed she was done, I tore into her. I cursed her for being a coward, for not having the heart to come to me and tell me she wasn't happy, seducing my best friend in some sick way of getting back at me for problems I wasn't aware existed, stepping out of our marriage because she's a self-manipulative, trifling bee. I verbally destroyed her. Then she had the audacity to look me in the eyes and ask was I going to leave her. I sitting there thinking in my head, is she effing serious? I was asking her straight up, you have been effing my best friend for months now, denying me affection and intimacy in the process and put me in the position that I left him a bloody mess with broken ribs in his own home and you expect me, me to try and work things out with you? That's what I said verbatim. Before she could say anything else, I tell her she has one hour to pack her crap and leave. For the next half hour, she goes through the emotions of begging me not to do this, demanding I listen to her and refusing to leave. I tell her I have nothing more to say to her and that any future communication between us will be through a divorce attorney. We are done. Eventually, she realizes the finality of my words and concedes. Within the hour, she packed up a bunch of her stuff, called her sister Kate, and was gone. To ensure I controlled the narrative while she did so, I went on social media and made it known to everyone what both she and my best friend had done. I didn't mince words and I didn't pull punches. I let it be known matter of factly that I caught both of them in the act and that I'd be filing for divorce in the coming days. As you'd expect, family and friends swarmed over the news. The reaction was about what you would expect. 
some condemning them for their actions, and some condemning me for making such a personal matter public. The surprising one was her father, who happens to be a pastor. He'd actually called me asking if there was any way I'd consider reconciliation, because Tyra was beside herself with grief and didn't want to lose me. He said, under God, there's no act that can be forgiven. To which I had to remind him that in the good book, he touts the virtues of so often. I am atheist, by the way. That isn't one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That shut his entire campaign of reconciliation down almost immediately. The next communication I had with him was him apologizing for his daughter's actions. And I've pretty much not heard from him again since. This all went down exactly one week ago to the day of me sending you this email. I've met with the lawyer already and began the process of filing for an uncontested divorce. The state I live in is at fault, so I'll take full advantage of that. I've gone completely no contact with Tyra and her side of the family. She sends me dozens of texts and emails daily begging for another chance, making all kinds of offers for reconciliation. Just yesterday, she sent me a 12-page six pages back to back, handwritten letter professing her love for me and admitting her mistakes. Yes, I actually read it. I'm a sucker for handwritten letters and she knows this. I read it to see if anything changed within me and it didn't. The words I read felt empty and hollow. I crumbled it up and threw it in the trash where it belongs. I haven't heard a word from Shet and if he's smart, and if he's smart, he'll keep it that way. If I ever see his face again, I'll likely make another attempt to put my fist through it. So that's pretty much it. How my selfish soon-to-be ex-wife cheated on me and in the process ruined an 11-year friendship. The wounds are still fresh and I am still processing everything in my head. May my story serve as a cautionary tale to all of you out there. Follow your instincts. If you suspect something is off, don't chalk it up to chance. Seek answers and follow through. I don't advocate for physical violence. Don't hesitate to confront a cheater when you have caught them in the act. The betrayal and hurt I feel is worse than anything I've ever felt. But I'll endure this and come out of the other side stronger. I believe I'd spend the rest of my life with her, start a family and grow old with her. But it's not to be. I'm young, entering my professional prime and not a bad looking guy. I'll bounce back from this and find a woman worthy of my time and effort. Thank you for reading and sharing this, if you do. Wow. Well, let me give my thoughts. Whoa, man. So, so I've been doing stories lately about how guys walked in and caught their uh, wife or fiance, you know, cheating or whatever or if I do a certain email from someone and it's about something specific and I say in the beginning of these videos how one person can be listening and you could be helping them this guy sounds like he went on the internet after this happened on YouTube and started searching for stories similar to this um he just went through it and he's like has anybody else gone through this like I feel like crap he feels alone and hearing, and, and that's how he, and he's, uh, apparently he stumbled across my videos is what he said in the beginning. Your guys' stories help. And no matter where I get the story from, if, if I get the story online, stories help people. A lot of you guys have listened to me because of one specific story. I've heard in emails all the time. I came across your channel because I was looking for a similar story of something I just went through. I was looking for answers and I came across your channel. I would like to share my story. Your guys' stories help. Your story hears. Your story is going to help someone. If someone's going through it, they've been through it. I recently spoke with someone who's a police officer. And he told me, he said, since this pandemic started, since, you know, 2020, around March, I remember, is when they shut things down and everybody stay home. People started working from home. I started working from home. A lot of people I know work from home and still do um he said domestic disputes went up sky high it it, it 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 every day all day most of their calls domestic disputes and the reason i thought of that was because you said once you started working home together you guys kind of started 
you know, not liking each other or she was upset about things and sex stopped, problems happen. It's because you're around each other all the time. And a lot of other people, apparently, they started fighting each other. Like, a lot of couples started fighting each other and things like that. Um, but um, it looks like she hit the gym. What, are, what does our Texas lawyers tell us? They have a lot of stories where the wife starts going to the gym and all of a sudden she cheats. And this is what happened, man. She started hitting that gym trying to get herself better for somebody else to move on. And I've heard a lot of stories about that, how the women will go to the gym and eventually you find her cheating. It's so sad, man. It was your best friend. That hurts, man. In this story, because I know recently I did some stories like this. The guys forgave their wife you know they <laughs> they forgave their fiance like okay i believe her you said no no you had a spine you have a backbone and you said screw you you screwed my best friend for months we had issues in our relationship you didn't come to me about their issues you just went outside of the relationship outside of the marriage excuse me and and tried to fix the issues that we were having together on your own and the way you were going to fix them was having sex with someone else and out of all people my best friend man that's cold and she had the nerve the nerve can we stay together can we work this out heck no Heck no. You're going to go get that divorce lawyer. Salute to you, man. Get that attorney. You move on and you get the heck out of here. Dude, I'm going to let you know. If you want to send in an update of how the divorce went, if you if you made it out victorious, if you, you know, let us know. Let us know the processes, the things, the steps you took to make sure you were good. You are very you are more than welcome to send that update. But no pressure, nothing on you. I wish you the best. It's, it's, you seem like you got everything together and you know what to do. Wow, man. Salute to you guys. In the comments, let me know what you think about this story. Wow. I wish you luck, man. And I, I, I got a feeling you're going you're gonna to come out strong and you're going to move on and be a better man. Salute to you. If you want to send in a story, send it to truestorynation at gmail.com. Here I'll put it on the screen. That's truestorynation at gmail.com.